Okay, here we have a Triceratops skull that was discovered by Jason Phipps in the summer of 2011 and excavated by Clayton Phipps that same summer and brought here in around December of 2011. And our job here um, at the CKP lab is going to be to prepare this skull, to totally clean the surface, uh, stabilize it, and mount it for display. Um, we'll start off with I guess uh, the condition it's in. All right, we're gonna go over the condition of the skull. Um, first off, we'll start with what was missing. Here we have a picture of a Triceratops skull, uh, same uh, same profile side as you can see here. And obviously, uh, what we're missing right there is the right brow horn core, and that had eroded out. It was totally gone. It wasn't at the site anymore. Uh, so the specimen had been uh, near the surface for quite some time. We're also missing a small portion of the nasal horn, as you can see up above the nasals, and all we're missing is just a little bit of the side. We have the whole top of it. It's not a very tall nose horn, but, um, but still nice. And then all the way up to the beak. Uh, we don't know if there are teeth in the sockets yet. We'll find that out uh, once we get underneath. And uh, other than that, uh, we're not missing anything else other than the lower jaws. We don't have them, but uh, when the specimen is finished, we will add lower jaw replicas to finish off the skull. Cool. All right, the first process we had to do when we got the skull in the lab was remove the plaster jacket. And so you can see here, we've cut it away in areas. Uh, it's still stabilizing the skull, so we won't remove all of it at this time. And then once we got the plaster jacket off, we were able to let the moisture that was in the fossil come out. Since it was close to the surface and we had a lot of rain in 2011, the fossil was very wet. And when that's the case, the glues that we use, the sanilacrylates and the vinac, won't uh, stabilize the fossil as good wet as it would if it was dry. Okay, here, uh, now that we've got the jacket off, um, we had to go through, it's dried out a good bit. And we've coated it with Vinac and also injected CA into the cracks where we can to start stabilizing the specimen. You can see down here in this area, uh, Katie's already done some microblasting. And uh, this area was dried out enough that we could get in there and do that. And you can see the nice dark brown color and nice surface texture going around. And uh, there's also some pathologies on the frill. I'll let Katie talk about that. But uh, come around here to the front, and here you can see the orbit, and this is the eye socket. Right here is what you're looking at there, and it goes down to the jugal, and that's going down there, and then up towards the nasal. Okay, I'm going to show you some pathology that um, we found while we were prepping the uh, right side of the squamosal here on the frill, and um, there's some really neat pieces you can see uh, pathology on different areas of the frill. Um, so here's the first one we started to notice. So it'd be like right in here. And then you can see all the neat texture and how it's raised up. And then over here you can see two other pathologies. Here um, on the pathologies on the frill here, um, this first piece, and then also over here, these two other pieces that have been injured, um, the bone has actually regrown and was healing. And um, what could have caused them are a few different things. Um, it, you know, you can use your imagination and have fun with it, but um, it could be a bite mark from a T-Rex, or uh, also if he was battling with another Triceratops, could be gouge marks in the frill too, so.